Okay, second talk we presented by uh, Professor Mahun Samo. And he, originally he was, uh, he came from Myanmar, and he was uh, my former student. He got a master degree and PhD degree uh, with me together. And then after he returned to uh, the Myanmar, and he was now the professor at the Chedwin University in Myanmar. And this time he also came to uh, Japan and he will give us a talk. And the relation between the two talks, the text told me the uh, fundamental things and up to, like, about mainly for the uh, or, or really failing channels. And, and uh, some want to talk about the 5G. Maybe most of them are very familiar. I can just say briefly, the 5G means the 5G generation mobile phone. First one is analog, okay? And second one is uh, the digital uh, mobile phone, but this is for basically voice only, okay? Third one is uh, voice plus multimeter data, okay? We can send it some data, okay? But not so high speed, okay? And the fourth one is really now, we are enjoying the, the mobile phone in the high speed networks. And what is the big difference for 5G and 4G? Is 5G, as you know, now the Internet of Things, IoT, or Internet of Everything, everything will be connected to the Internet. And everyone used uh, for mobile phone, not only the voice communication or data communication, like machine to machine, or uh, some IoT basis things. So, still must be changed. So, I, this 5 generation mobile phone will be used for, to apply everything about agriculture or some commerce or something like that. So that will be a big change, okay? So it's in Japan, the Japanese society or government tells us connected society. Everything is connected, everything is connected and everything is controlled by machine or mobile, by using this mobile phone. And there are many, many challenges, okay? So, so that, yes, that is a good thing and as I told you, uh, the mass in my mind, that's the that, that told us, that is a hot topic and he's mainly explaining about this one. Okay, so please. Uh, okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at first, I would like to thank Keo University and Professor Sasase for this uh, arrangement for this special lecture. Um, today, I would like to talk about uh, key technologies and challenges in 5G, mobile wireless communication, and that is the first part of uh, today's lecture. In the second part, I will explain about our uh, research work, which is emphasized on the reduction of complexity for resource allocation in message MIMO system. This message MIMO is a, a potential key technology for the 5G mobile wireless communication. So for the uh, first part, I will explain about this uh, content, which is uh, shown in this slideshow. At first, I will briefly introduce uh, from 1G to 5G, mobile wireless communication system, uh, what is their feature, what is their speed, and what kind of technology they are using, or something like that. And then I will talk about the positive demand in 5G, wireless communication, like data rate, spare efficiency, low latency, and switching time, message connectivity in 5G wireless, and how to reduce the energy usage, and then mobility for 5G user. And then <coughs> I will explain about key, key technology and challenges in 5G wireless. Uh, usually these are some of the potential key technology. Uh, because of time limitation, I cannot include all of the uh, possible key technology in this uh, lecture. So I extract only four key technology, namely message MIMO and WinForme, and millimeter weight frequency band, and then sports deployment and visible light communication. Uh, for the second part, I will talk about research-related topic. Uh, my research is related to the message MIMO system, so that's why I will briefly explain about what is the MIMO and message MIMO, and then what is the complexity in this message MIMO system, and how we can reduce this complexity uh, in the conventional method and also in our method. And then, uh, simulation that will be shown and the conclusion. So, 
for this uh, back one, this is the brief uh, comparison about uh, 1G to uh, 5G. Uh, as uh, Professor Sasasi already explained briefly in previous, this 1G is made the difference between, the main difference between 1G and other generation is 1G uh, used uh, as, as, as another technology. Uh, this is the main difference between the 1G and other generation. Other generation use the digital technology. <laughs> so that is the main difference. Uh, from 2G to 3G is the, this 2G is uh, mainly the, the difference is that this is still using the circuit switching. Um, but uh, sometimes packet switching, but other generation is changed to the packet. Uh, so that is one difference between the PSD and network to packet network, and also when compared with 1G and 2G, the other difference is this uh, technology use frequency division, multiple access for the multiplexing technique. This is time division, multiple access. Um, from 2G to 3G, we change the PSD and network to the packet network. So that is the main difference. And also, uh, the technology also changed from the DDMA technology to CDMA and GSM, uh, UMTS technology. Um, for the changes from 3G to 4G, the difference is that the multiplexing technique we are using the OFDMA technology, also going to frequency division, multiple access. And also, in here, the, we can uh, edit. Uh, Hanover technology, not only this is the host in the Hanover, but also we can do the particular Hanover uh, in the 4G technology. And also the switching and go network is changed to all packet and the internet uh, travels. So now we are considering to change to the 5G technology in 2000, uh, nearly 2000, around 2020. All, all, all technology here, we can estimate the one, one generation uh, stand around 10 years. So after every 10 years, the technology change. So that's me, we hope that in 2020, the 5G will be started. So the problem in, uh, we will talk about what is the problem in uh, 5G, what is the demand for 5G and what uh, we are doing to solve this problem and demand. Uh, what is the challenge about this uh, 5G technology? So the possible demand in 5G wireless is related to data rate, spectral efficiency, that is the bandwidth uh, bit per second per hash and the per second per uh, hash per kilometer and also the latency reduction, switching time, massive connectivity, green communication mobility. So uh, for the data rate uh, demand, <coughs> in the 4G, the maximum peak data rate is around one gigabit per second we can support. But in the 5G communication, we hope to support them to 20 times higher data rate. So that means uh, the possible big data rate in 5G should be from 10 gigabit per second to 20 gigabit per second. And uh, we also need to, 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 to support this kind of very high speed data rate, we need to improve the spectral efficiency. And also, latency, I mean, uh, this is a connectivity time, uh, maybe response time or something like that. So, in 4G system, uh, this is latency is around 50 millisecond to 100 millisecond. So this millisecond is uh, enough for human to human communication. But in the 5G system, uh, we will have the communication not only between human to human, but also there will be communication between device to device, D to D, and M to M, machine to machine, and also there will be connection from the Internet of Things device. So sometimes uh, these devices require very much uh, low uh, uh, latency. Uh, for example, if uh, maybe near future there will be cell driving 
car. So that means driverless car. So this driverless car, we also uh, want to use the 5G network to control uh, the movement of the car. So sometimes, if this car is necessary to stop immediately the emergency condition. So it, uh, in that case, if uh, the stop command, the arrival time of the stop command is uh, very long, then this car will hit something, and there will be accident occur. So to avoid this accident, this latency uh, should be less than or equal to one millisecond. Uh, so that is why we need a uh, very much low latency in the 5G network. And the session time also, uh, session time being when this 5G technology will give the, not only the uh, Hanover, but also the Batike Hanover, and also we are using the various radio assess technology. So that means sometimes uh, we are, uh, this 5G user using one radio assess technology and move to the another network and change to the radio assess technology. And in that case, this device, 5G device, need to change the, uh, needs to switch the radio assess technology from one way to another way. So at that time, if this switching time is very long, then there will be a cold drop or hand uh, or a flare. Um, so, and also there will be a occur, uh, sub, what, what kind of occur is non seamless condition. So to give the seamless connectivity, this switching time should be less than 10 milliseconds. And also, when compared with 4G network, there will be connected device will be larger than maybe 100 times larger than uh, the 4G network. So because because uh, in the 5G network we will uh, support not only the human uh, user but also the Internet of Things and device to device and machine to machine, will, all device will be connected to this 5G network. So that means we need to support a massive amount of connected device. Maybe billion of devices will be connected to this network. So we need to consider how to handle these billions of devices. And in 5G wireless, we also consider how to reduce the energy consumption. This is not to support, uh, not to only support the green communication, but also need to reduce the uh, battery uh, power usage. So to increase the battery lifetime in your mobile handset, and also in the sensor network, because sensor network use the limited amount of energy source. So by saving this uh, energy usage, we can increase the lifetime of the sensor network. And also, uh, we need to consider to support the faster user mobility, maybe 500 kilometer per hour, because. Uh, uh, currently, the 4G network can support about uh, 250 kilometers per hour, but this is enough for uh, maybe bullet train or something like that. But in the near future, this 5G network uh, will be used not only on the uh, bullet train, but also maybe on the airplane or something like that. So in that case, this uh, speed will be much faster than bullet train. Okay, so. Uh, to support this demand, we are considering to use uh, uh, some kind of key technology. So, uh, man, these key technology, these are the popular potential uh, key technology to support the 5G uh, demands. One, the first one is the message memo and ring for me. So. Uh, to answer, to understand about this message MIMO and being for me, I will briefly explain about the MIMO technology. What is the uh, MIMO and message MIMO? Because this MIMO technology is now we are currently using in the 4G network, but in the 5G we consider to change the MIMO technology to message MIMO. And what is the being for me, and what we can get the uh, what kind of benefit we can get from this technology, and what is the challenges in this MIMO technology. So the MIMO technology is, uh, this is a very brief uh, explanation about the MIMO technology. MIMO means uh, multiple input, multiple output technology. 
So multi band input, multi band output mean if we are using the multi band <laughs> transmit antenna, that is the input side, and the transmitter side, and also if we are using the multi band receive antenna and the receiver side, output side. So in that situation, we call this kind of system as a MIMO, multi band input, multi band output. By using this MIMO technology, we can improve the time velocity of the system performance because we can hear, uh, we, we can see that here there has a two link, so this uh, redundancy links can improve the time velocity, and also we can make the beam forming to improve the coverage. So, um, like here, as shown here, this uh, coverage can be we can extend. By using the beamforming, we can uh, uh, emphasize the, our transmit energy into only uh, target, target device. And also, by using MIMO technology, we can use space division, multiple access technique. By using this technique, we can accept more users in target cell. And also, by using the MIMO technology, we can transmit multiple layer transmission. We can transmit the different data at the same time in the frequency. So that means we can save the bandwidth by using this technology. So, uh, massive MIMO means for the current uh, 4G MIMO system, number of antenna is not so. Uh, large, not so much. So that means, for example, maybe four antenna is using in this base station, then we can call this as a MIMO. Uh, what is the difference between MIMO to massive MIMO is the main difference is number of uh, antenna is uh, very uh, large. So here we can see that. So that is the main difference. But, <laughs> Uh, by using this MIMO, uh, massive MIMO system, we can benefit more users with less interference. That is, if you are using this massive MIMO as a multi-user MIMO uh, technology, uh, if you are using the massive MIMO as a single-user MIMO, then we can give more spacious stream. And more, uh, we can get more stable channel, that is called channel herony. That is explanation about how we can get the uh, we can we, we can reduce the interference between each user and the message MIMO. This is a MIMO and this is a message MIMO. This is number of uh, antenna in the system. So if we are if we are using message number of antenna, then we can create the uh, most sharp depth in the beam, in the transmission beam. So that means this beam will not interfere to the other user. So that means how we can reduce the interference uh, between uh, user in the system by using the uh, massive MIMO for multi-user case. If we use the massive MIMO for single user case, what we can improve is the data stream. Well, we can give more data stream for this kind of system. So that means for the uh, for the two system, this uh, system can. Uh, support the higher data rate with the same bandwidth. Same bandwidth. Uh, another thing, uh, what we can get by using the message MIMO is uh, this is a MIMO system, this is a message MIMO. Because of uh, large number of antenna transmission, then this uh, uh, receive signal will be combined here and we can get the flat uh, channel, channel gain in here. This channel gain, there is no fluctuation like this. So we can improve the channel condition by using the uh, message number of antenna in the system. And so to, to get this kind of achievement, we are using the message MIMO, but we will also face some kind of challenge by using this message MIMO. So one, uh, one thing is the binary contamination. So because we are using the very large number of uh, antenna system, each antenna is necessary to use each uh, pilot pattern. So 
so this, to distinguish between each pile of, uh, each antenna, these pile should be auto coordinated to each other. So, but when the number of the antenna is very large, uh, it is not easy to uh, create the auto coordinated pile of for each antenna in the system. So that is, uh, we can, so because of this condition, uh, the, pile, the pile of contamination will be occur. Uh, because of this pile of contamination, and channel estimation will be also hard, difficult, uh, especially in the FTD mode. Uh, if we are using the DDD mode, we can assume that the downlink channel is uh, equal to the uplink channel. In that case, we can use the reciprocal channel in the uplink and downlink. But in the FTD mode, the downlink uh, downlink bandwidth Downlink frequency and uplink frequency is not the same. Uh, different frequency we are used. So the, in that case, this uh, uh, different channel condition, we cannot assume that the downlink is not always the same, the uplink. So th this is well, uh, channel estimation will be difficult for the FTT mode. That's why most of the method my most system consider uh, to apply in the FTT mode, uh, sorry, TTT mode. Uh, because of massive numbers of and and then uh, how are you usage in the mass uh, in this system the higher cost will be occur and also the complexity will be high because we consider to solve all of the antenna in our calculation so that is the challenge in message uh, my mo uh, we are uh, emphasize how to reduce these uh, cost and complexity in our research work. That, that will be talked later. So the second key technology is millimeter wave frequency band. By using this millimeter wave frequency band, the benefit is increased bandwidth, low power and small cell. Why we are using this millimeter wave frequency band is because currently in uh, the 4G system, the main bandwidth we are using is less than three gigahertz. So, but this band is really crowded now. So it is not uh, available to, there has no space to increase our requirement in this area. But this area is very popular. It is easy uh, to, transmission because uh, there has a low path loss and also uh, we, we are, the channel barriers are already, uh, uh, standardized channel barrier already exists and we can use readily. But uh, uh, this there has no space in this area. So if uh, we want to increase the data rates and we want to increase the uh, uh, what data requirement for the 5G demand, we need to consider higher bandwidth. There, there has a lot of space uh, over there, uh, three gigahertz bandwidth, uh, around six gigahertz, and around 30, 50, 16, and 17, 80 and 90 gigahertz. There is uh, some free space already exists. And um, if we can use this, uh, this is very, uh, high frequency bandwidth, so that's why we uh, we are calling this bandwidth as a millimeter wave frequency band. So by using this millimeter wave frequency band, we can easily uh, use the space available. So because uh, of this millimeter wave frequency band, they, we can also use the low power transmission because this frequency band cannot go far away. So we are intended to use this kind of frequency in the uh, small cell. Because of this small cell, the transmission uh, power can be reduced. But if we want to use the millimeter wave band, then the challenges occur here. Because uh, currently, and it uh, three gigahertz, we already know what is the propagation condition for uh, low frequency band, but if we are using uh, the millimeter wave band, we need to consider very different propagation phenomena. Uh, some kind of phenomenon is in this uh, bandwidth, 
the ox uh, because of oxygen and wet water vapor on there in the atmosphere, uh, there will be a lot of uh, losses will be occur for this transmission. And also, Hawaii constraint will be occur to use the very high frequency. And also, channel modeling, we need to consider how to model this channel, not only for the break, but also for our simulation. That's, uh, and this is also very uh, occur high pass loss when it faced with uh, blockage like this wall and uh, this uh, uh, obstacle that we can face uh, high path loss when compared with a low frequency IF bandwidth. So that's why we cannot use very large cell radius. The cell radius should be less than uh, 10 meter. But this is another good uh, opportunity to use the small cell technology. So there are, because of these two sensitive to the blockage, uh, there will be two different kinds of cell will be organ light in door and outdoor coverage separately. And the third technology is dense small cell deployment. By using the, this dense small cell deployment, we can benefit latency reduction, and improve the network capacity, and increase the spectral efficiency. So latency reduction means in the current 4G system, latency is uh, approximately 50 milli milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. But this is good for home and I already explained. Uh, when, when we are using the gaming of VR technology and AR technology, and also gaming and tech time internet, then we need to reduce this latency as much as possible, maybe less than one millisecond. So by, by using this dense small set deployment, we can uh, reuse the space uh, much more when compared with the micro te technology. That's why we can in increase the spectral efficiency and also network capacity. One thing to reduce the latency is we can use the uh, D2D direct communication between the device. But if we use the dense small set deployment, the, we will face the challenges like here. Uh, there will be increase in handover failure and cut off when you are changing from one small set to another small set. Uh, because uh, the set coverage is very small, so it is more likely occur changing the uh, one small set to another, say one user working or driving the car. So in, the, in that case, it is uh, difficult to make the, to handle the handover, and it will be a handover failure, or maybe sometime call drop. Uh, we also need to consider how to make the efficient proximity detection in uh, D2D communication, and how to make the network integration for the small set deployment. And there, there will be also increase in intercell interference between these small cell because uh, uh, these nearby cell uh, will be deploying maybe uncontrolled deployment or uh, for these uh, dense small cell deployment because we have to uh, deploy uh, not not a, a few amount we have to deploy large amount of small cell in the area. So in that case, sometimes maybe it, it, it is not possible to systematically deploy all of the small cell in that area. So because of this and controlled deployment, then interference of nearby uh, small cell will be occur. So this is one example of how uh, we can see the dense, uh, dense small cell deployment. This is a core network uh, connected to the micro base station, Inobi. Uh, this is a regular uh, micro cell. Uh, and around this area, we introduce the small cell like this one, this one. And this is a, like a femto cell uh, by using the wi fi technology. Uh, by, and also the one thing uh, benefit by using small cell is we can improve the cognitive radio technology. Uh, we can, in the micro cell, we can use the primary carrier, uh, lysine band, and in the small cell, uh, the secondary carrier and lysine band can be used. Uh, 
by using this small cell technology. Uh, so the one thing to handle the handover uh, of a flare or maybe cut off, uh, the one thing, the one the one thing we want to do is, we can do is, uh, we can separate the user plane and control plane for the small cell. So uh, the, the control plane will be handled by the micro base station, and the user plane will be handled by small cell base station. So by separating this kind of uh, control plane and user plane, this small cell uh, will not uh, control the user movement. When user move, from this cell to this cell, uh, around this area, the micro base station will handle this mobile node. Uh, when in, uh, entering this uh, small cell, this micro base station will handle the handover to this small cell, and user can stay use the internet or call his own. Uh, the fourth technology is the visible live communication, uh, mostly popular like line find technology. Line find is similar to Wi Fi technology. This is uh, Wi Fi technology used the radio frequency, but this line find technology used the light spectrum uh, for the communication. So that's why this technology is named as live fidelity uh, line find. By using the light, uh, light spectrum as a communication, we can get the benefit here. We have the very wide spectrum range. Uh, to, to compare this case, uh, we currently we are using the radio uh, frequency RF band, starting from the three kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. That is what we, are we can use the RF wave. Uh, if we use the light spectrum uh, as a communication, then we can use the starting bandwidth is around 400 terahertz to 700 terahertz. So that means this is uh, a thousand times wider than the current uh, IF bandwidth. So that is uh, one benefit by using this kind of uh, line find technology here, yeah, the LED is transmitting the data uh, to the target mobile node, like here, here, here. And also we can use uh, this line find technology for, not only for the direct communication, but also for the point to multi point system, like here. So by using this uh, line find technology, we can offload the cell data to the line find network. So if we can offload the data, uh, we uh, micro base station or small cell base station can handle uh, more data for the other uh, user which cannot use the line find technology at the same time. And also we can give the secure communication because, because uh, if one body want to hack this uh, data communication, he need to get the line of sight with transmission because the data is inside the light. So if he cannot see the light, he cannot get the data. So that means, uh, for example, if we are using the Wi-Fi network, this Wi-Fi uh, tra data transmission is using the IF technology. So IF will is leaked to the outside wall. So sometimes somebody can access the Wi-Fi network, he can get the data. If he knows someone's password, or maybe if the Wi-Fi network is not controlled by the password authentication. But for this technology, if we are using the, uh, the uh, internet inside the room by using the line find, we need to access the, to the light. If somebody cannot see the light, he cannot get the data. So that is very simple. So that's why it is most secure when compared with the Wi-Fi technology. But this is another uh, disadvantage. Uh, we cannot, we cannot use the internet if we cannot see the line find uh, the, uh, light. Uh, but by, because of using the uh, LED as a light trans, uh, transmission, then we can reduce the power when compared with the Wi-Fi transmission. We can reduce the low power. And also because we are using the light technology, this technology can use uh, also inside the hospital and airline and power plant. Uh, normally this area we cannot use the uh, 
have way to apply to the interference to their, their machine, you know, their device. Uh, and also, we can uh, use this line line technology as a indoor GPS. So, but we have the challenges. We cannot use, mostly we cannot use in the outside wall by using this line line technology because the outside wall there has a sunlight interference. Because of this kind of outside light interference, it is not possible uh, to use the line line technology. And we also need the line of sight condition. And also, another thing is we need the ultra fast switching LED device. Uh, so that is uh, one example of uh, future possible 5G mobile wireless communication. In this kind of 5G system, we can see all kind of information. This is a message my mobile station with been for me. Now what? This is fan cell or maybe line fine indoor solution. And this is fan cell Wi-Fi indoor solution. This is micro cell. Uh, micro base station with mobile code network and control to the other small cell. And also this is occurring the D2D communication between the direct communication between the device. And this is uh, some kind of internet of things. Sensor network will connect to the internet by using the uh, 5G network. Okay, so now we go, we're Going to the second part, uh, which is related to our uh, research work. So our research work is related to the MESMIMO system. Uh, we will uh, explain about the uh, problem in MESMIMO. Um, uh, already explained about the uh, same problem, which is related to the binary contamination and channel estimation. Uh, the one thing is higher cost and complexity in machine number and then uh, so, so the possible solution for this case, to solve this case is, if we want to reduce the cost, uh, we want to reduce the how wire usage. So for the message uh, MIMO system, the how uh, is most, most, uh, mostly expensive when we are using the baseband chain and RF chain how wire. The antenna is not so much expensive. One compare with the base, uh, baseband hardware and radio frequency chain. So to reduce the cost, we can limit the uh, number of RF chain, but we can increase the number of uh, antenna for this system. So if we are uh, limiting the RF chain, then uh, we need to consider which RF chain will be connected to which end and then because the number of RF chain is not equal to the number of transmitter or receive and then so that's me uh, we need to select which and now is the best one to use the communication by connecting with RF available RF chain so that's me uh, resource allocation is important uh, to select the best antenna or the best user in the message MIMO system. So that's why I need to consider how to se select the best or optimal antenna or user to connect with the limited RF chain to improve the system performance. So before going to this resource allocation, I will uh, briefly explain about the Different between the single user MIMO and multi user MIMO. Single user MIMO, if we are using the multiple number of transmit and receive antenna, like in this figure A, but all the data stream go to only one user. So that's me. Uh, for this case, this is, is uh, this MIMO system intended for that user only. So that means we are calling this kind of system as a single user MIMO, SU MIMO. So for this kind of system, we can know the capacity by using uh, equation one. So in equation one, we can see that this is the channel condition, channel metric for, between the transmit and receive. So if we know the channel, channel metric, then we can calculate the capacity for this single user MIMO. Uh, on the other hand, for the multi-user MIMO case, if the data stream goes not only to one user, but also another user, other user, like shown here, then this is what we call the multi-user MIMO. This 
uh, for this kind of system, if we want to know the capacity data rate uh, for the system, then we have to use this kind of equation, equation number two. So in this equation, this is a SINR information. SINR means signal to interference plus noise ratio between the user. So if we put uh, this information for each user and make the summation, then we can get the uh, total capacity, sum rate. So do, uh, for this kind of multi-user MIMO system, beamforming is required for the multi-user MIMO. So beamforming is what, uh, what we uh, need to do to get the beamforming transmission. Uh, like in PPS uh, slide, the, the transmission signal is goes to each user directly uh, as a light beam. So to get this kind of transmission, we need to know the weight method for each user. Before transmission is starting, we apply the weight matrix into the transmission signal, then this signal goes to the directly to the end of the user, target user. So to use the beamforming, at least we need to know the weight method. But uh, the first time we can know is only the channel matrix H. So if, if we know the channel matrix H, we can calculate the weight matrix by using the singular value decomposition. So after getting the channel matrix H weight beta and transmit power, we can know the SINR, and this SINR can be applied to here to get the solution for equation two. So that means to solve the equation two, we need to calculate the singular value decomposition. Okay, uh, what, why I, I am explaining about the singular value decomposition is because uh, we will also use uh, this uh, technology to solve the resource allocation later. So after I briefly uh, explain about uh, basic uh, idea and concept about this research work, which is uh, necessary to understand the, our research work, the, it will go to the system model for our case. In the, our system model, we consider the multi-user MIMO. This is method MIMO. So multi-user method MIMO down in the world, uh, base station with and transmit and then now, set up and there has a K user with a single receive antenna. So, so that means there has a K user and each user has a single receive antenna. And, but BS is only equipped with S RF chain. So that means S RF chain is less than or equal to number of transmit antenna N. So because uh, we want to reduce the cost. So that's why we limit the number of RFJ. For this condition, if we want to transmit the data, we need to activate some transmit antenna for the communication. So in that case, and also we need to select which user is um, debated to get to receive the transmit data. So that means base station need to select the antenna for transmission and also the user for receiving. So we define antenna A set and user U set for this activated antenna and the selected user. And this uh, system model we also illustrate in this slide. Here we can see that the, this base station antenna use number and antenna uh, with limited I chain S. After passing this MIMO channel, user, each user will select, uh, we receive, but not of all the user. The user, number of user must be less than or equal to number of available RFJ. Yeah. So, uh, in this system, we assume that ba the base station already knows the uh, channel state information, uh, and channel metric from the channel, uh, channel state information, and based on this channel state information, and then our user selection will be calculated. So, uh, 
next one I will explain about complexity in resource allocation. That is uh, the optimal resource allocation, brute force size. So optimal resource allocation means, for example, this system. This is just an easy example to understand about the resource allocation. So this is a transmission side, this is a receive side. So that has two users. And that has five antenna. But we have only two RF chain. So that means we can activate only two transmit antenna. So in that case, we need to select which two is the best one to improve the system performance. So for this case, uh, we need to calculate each pair, each combination. For example, maybe the first consideration is A1, A2. After I consider A1, A2, we need to move A1, A3, A1, A3, A1, A4, I so on. So that is how we uh, connected to these two antenna, to this user, and this user, and two user. So that means we need to consider like two antenna connected to one user case, two antenna connected to user two case, and two antenna connected to both user. So that means we have three situation. So after write down these all possible combination, that is like a kind of permutation combination theory. So by using this permutation combination, then we can get 30 possibility. So for this 30 possibility, we need to we need to apply in for each possibility we need to apply in equation this this equation. To apply in this equation, we need to know the assigned information. To get this assigned information, we need to use the singular value decomposition. So that means every, for every combination, we need to apply the singular value decomposition. After getting calculation of 30 calculation, we have 30 answer. So among these 30 answer, we will select the maximum one. This maximum one is the best one to increase the system efficiency. So that is a uh, optimum method. So this optimum method is very huge complexity because we are now considering only very small amount. If the antenna and user is very large, maybe more than 10 or nearly hundreds, then the, uh, we, 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 can, we can consider that this maybe billion of calculation is required. So that's why this optimum solution is not possible to apply in real world scenario. So for that case, if we want to apply uh, this resource allocation in real world scenario, we will need to consider how to reduce this complexity. So that is uh, some research consider to reduce the complexity in their way. Uh, that has, uh, I take out only uh, two. For example, one is the fixed selection with high standard gain, and the next one is sliding window selection with sorted standard gain in assigning order with assigner information and block time colonization, recoding technique for the beam forming. Uh, I will explain these two technology first, and then I will explain about our proposed method, and then simulation result will be shown. So to reduce the complexity for the antenna slash and user slash, this conventional method is fixed slash method. That is very simple. Before selecting uh, this transmit antenna one to five, the channel gain of this transmit antenna is calculated. And after that, this channel gain, uh, the antenna will be sorted with assigning order based on the channel gain. So that means transmit antenna A3 has the maximum gain, and A1 is the second maximum, like that. This is the, after sorting. So after sorting, uh, and also user also, user side also will be sorting. This is the maximum channel, maximum gain, user one, this is the second maximum. If we have more than two users, they will be sorting like that, like similar to the antenna. So after sorting, just let uh, transmit and receive based on the available RFJ. 
If available I chain is two, just let two and another. And also two is If the I chain is three, select three and another. And then the, there is only two users, so we cannot uh, increase the user size. But if user is more than three, then we will select three uh, user for this fixed selection method. So that is, so even after sliding, uh, we, uh, this technology also need to calculate the singular value decomposition, uh, but only one time. Because we want to use the block diagonalization beam forming. So to use the block diagonalization, we need to know the uh, weight beta. To get the weight beta, we need to apply the singular value decomposition. So that's why even after sliding this channel metric, we still have to calculate only one time for this singular value decomposition. So but uh, this is very simple, but not effective because there might, uh, these two transmit and then uh, might be uh, highest channel gain, but maybe uh, these two will be highly correlated because uh, the, the, the channel gain cannot distinguish between the uh, gain and correlation. So sometimes if these two and then are also uh, the best, uh, the highest channel gain, but if they are correlated, the system performance will be cold down. To avoid this condition, we also need to consider not only their channel gain, but also their correlation. If we can uh, avoid the correlation, highly correlation, then we can improve their system performance more. So, so for that case, this uh, method, this method in 21, uh, reference in 21, the sliding window selection with sort of channel gain. So this method also uh, consider how to select. So in their work, they consider like this way. At first, before before starting this uh, selection, uh, they make the similar. They calculate the channel gain and make the sorting with assigning order based on the channel gain. So that means A3 is the, uh, the highest one, Number one, this is number two, uh, A2 is number three, number four, number five. So this is after sorting, and also this is after sorting. But in their case, they consider like this pair. Take the upper two, this is, this window is equivalent to the number of half chain. If number of half chain is two, they make, uh, they, they take out two and then inside the window. So by using that window, they consider transmitting transmission to only user one and calculate. Uh, after getting, this is one bear. For, for, for this red color bear, they will calculate the capacity by using this equation. So to calculate this equation, they need to know the assigned information. This assigned information, can get by using the singular value decomposition. So that means every combination, they need to calculate a singular value decomposition every time for each pair. But after this consideration, this window slide up. Why and then not? So that means this is black color. And try uh, calculate again. And blue color, calculate again. And red, yellow color, calculate. After that, they consider another pair. Another pair is next slide. So at first, they consider only one user. And the next time, they consider again with two user case. So that is like, so for this case, user, one user case, they need to calculate four times. For two user case, they also need to calculate another four times. So that means in their method, the calculation time required is eight times. So they have eight uh, answer. Among these answer, they choose the highest one, the highest pair. So that, that is their method. So in, uh, in our method, we consider another way uh, to reduce, not only to reduce the complexity, but also to increase the 
uh, capacity, some rate. So in our method, uh, we use the four key points. That's right down here. Number one key point is we also consider the same, we also use the same idea like uh, two previous uh, two methods. Uh, we are using the channel again to sort the antenna and user with uh, assigning order. Uh, number two key point is we assume that this system is look like a single user system, not multi-user system. So if we assume this system is uh, look like a single user case, then we don't need to use the equation two. We can use equation one. The complexity of equation one is much lower when compared with complexity of equation two. Because in equation one, we don't need to we don't need to apply the singular value decomposition. Okay, so that's why we assume this uh, system as a multi -use, uh, single user MIMO case. Uh, number three key beta is we will limit the number of consideration, uh, the number of antenna and user for the consideration. So that's me. We will not consider all of the antenna. We will limit the consideration side. The side of the, the, the number of the transmitter and uh, also user. This is we call the limiting factor Z. And also we will use every channel K to limit the number of uh, and antenna and user. And the last one is that we use the PD precoding technique for the multi-user MIMO system with selected combination which is selected in, by using the key factor two, and then we were applying the singular value decomposition only one time to know the way better for our beamforming transmission. So, uh, so for this uh, proposed method, at first we need to make the initial set. This is uh, for uh, transmit antenna side, and also we also need to create the user set, but uh, we'll explain only the transmitter side, and the user side will be same, same idea. So here, at the initial time, this is A1, A2, A3, all the antenna is included. After that, this set is uh, changed to the sorted condition, from the maximum channel gain to minimum the assigning order. So like here, A31254, like this. And then we will find the average channel gain. Average channel gain may be somewhere near the middle. So that's me here, for example, this average channel gain is here, like this. So here, we will consider only the uh, antenna, which is above, situated above the average channel gain. So the channel gain of these three antenna is higher than average channel gain. So in that case, we will use the, these three and then only. But sometimes the average channel gain is very low. Maybe, maybe there is more antenna. The average channel gain is here. The believer are changed to, And then we will not consider all the uh, antenna above the average channel gain. In that case, if we, we limit more by using the factor Z. So that means we will consider the maximum number of consideration is limited by like this, this algorithm. So this is number of antenna above the average channel gain. This is number of available RFJ. So we compare these two. If this is less than one, this one, then we will select like this. If this one is situated between uh, RF and RF plus C, then we will select it and here. If this condition, not this good match, then we will select like and here. So that means the maximum number of the uh, selected uh, antenna should be RF plus Z. So that is maximum number. So here, if we are using the Z is equal to one, the RF is equal to two, the maximum number should be three antenna. So that means the selected, the selected channel is uh, the slider and an asset is like this one, A3, A1, A2.
So after getting the sled uh, antenna set, we were applying the uh, brute force search. Brute force search means we will consider all of the positive combination. So for this case, the positive combination is like this, uh, this block, and this block, and this yellow color block. Only three combination is possible for our case. For, for each possible combination, we need to calculate the capacity by using this equation. And then here we are uh, uh, assuming our this system is the single user MIMO system. That's why we apply this equation. So based on this equation, there will be three answer and we will select the maximum one. But uh, for the, uh, our proposed method, the actual transmission is not single user MIMO system. The actual transmission will be done for the multi-user case. So for, uh, for our case, we still need to know the weight matrix better uh, to make the BD beamforming transmission. So be, 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 be forming me, blood diagonalization, be forming communication. So to know this way better, we will apply the singular value decomposition for the finest sledded uh, combination. So for example, if the yellow color is finest sledded one, we will apply the SVD to this yellow color. And then we know the uh, way better, and then we can use the, we can use the uh, be forming. So that is, that, is, that is our idea, so how we can reduce the complexity. So in our case, we need to consider only three combinations. And also, we can avoid the singular value decomposition in every calculation. We need only use uh, to use the singular value decomposition only one time. So uh, the next slide is about to discuss uh, simulation result. So for this simulation, we are using the channel with relay fading, with block diagonal, uh, block, uh, block fading. Uh, SNR is, uh, average SNR is 10 dB we consider. Cell is the single cell. Number of packet in simulation is, that is simulation time, uh, 10,000. And that is spring bar packet. Uh, number and then now will be bearish, so we just put N. And number of chain in the base station is, so of chain is half of the antenna and one third of antenna, and that's sorry, that is one fourth of antenna. And num this is number of user. Number of user also will change from two to so many. Okay, so mm -hmm. that is theoretical analysis, uh, numerical analysis, and that is simulation, simulation result. So from the numerical analysis, uh, we, our method will have the upper bound and lower bound. Upper bound means that this is the upper, if uh, we also uh, use the z is equal to two and z is equal to one case. Z, z is equal to two is here, this is upper bound for two, and z is equal to one is uh, this one. This is upper bound. For both cases, they have lower, lower bound meaning, lower bound meaning, for example, the uh, easy to understand is, if z is equal to zero, then this is lower bound. So that is like, look like z is equal to zero, and this is the method in 21, and this is optimal method, very high complexity method. So, uh, so that is here, we need to know, this is a log, log graph, a uh, semi log graph. So that's why the uh, difference is very high. Okay, and also, yeah, we can see that our uh, method can reduce the complexity. And this is the complexity for user based from uh, 2 to 20. And number of antenna is using 12 and half chain is 4. Also, we can see that it is, uh, we can reduce the complexity. And this is uh, the sum rate capacity result. The capacity result, our method can achieve higher than the method in 21, but still, our method, both method is under the optimum method. So that is 
of uh, little data case, if we increase the number of antenna and number of user, then uh, we will face the similar situation. Not only the uh, less user, but also the uh, larger number of antenna and user. So in conclusion, uh, the capacity, we can increase the capacity when compared with the, not only the capacity, but also the simulation time we can reduce. Uh, so for further res uh, research, we need to consider the effect of channel coalition among the base station and an user side more. Uh, okay. So thank you for this lecture. Okay, so are there any questions? Uh, thank you for the presentation. So I have a question about uh, your proposed method for the antenna selection. Yes. So the goal is to increase the spectral efficiency, but have you also studied the uh, energy efficiency aspect of this method? Energy efficiency, no, I, we didn't consider about this uh -huh. energy efficiency, efficiency uh -huh. in our case. We didn't consider. I mean, uh, is there any way to make it energy efficient, like this proposed method? Uh, the one thing we want to, uh, we, want, we can tell is if we can reduce the processing. Uh, processing here, we can see that the CPU processing, the CPU processing, we can reduce a lot more when compared with other to make that. Uh, like here. This is CPU usage time. So also this is a, a loss scale. So that means this scale and this scale is uh, 10, times, 10, 10 times higher, higher. So what we can say is for the energy case, if we can reduce the CPU usage, then this is also some kind of energy Reduction saving. Of the power consumption. Yes. Yeah. So that means if we want to include that result, then we need to calculate what kind uh, of uh, energy will be used for one CPU time. Mm -hmm. Then we can compare the energy usage for this CPU calculation. Mm -hmm. But for the transmission, then we are using the same transmission technology for all, all of the method to make the fair comparison mm -hmm. between the conventional method and our method. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, maybe we cannot use the transmission energy to show the energy uh, efficiency. If we want to show the energy efficiency, then we can change this CPU time to the energy. So now, yes. like that. And just one more question. Okay. And re regarding the uh, pilot con contamination in massive MIMO, so for, for, for example, for a multi-cell scenario in a cellular network, Yes. Uh, I know people use uh, like for example, pilot reuse patterns yes. to reduce this uh, pilot contamination. Uh, is there is there any other way or uh, like a better way? I don't know if this is the only to, way. To solve the pilot contamination? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't really not so much about the pilot contamination because now I'm just emphasized on this <laughs> resource allocation technique. Yeah. So. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So any other questions? Yes. Uh, thank you for presentation. And uh, I have uh, two questions about your box. Yes. And uh, the first one is, uh, so, uh, is it possible to assume the, the two, uh, more than two uh, users as one single user? Because you assume you assume the multi-user MIMO to yes. single-user MIMO. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it is possible because uh, because actually uh, we we just assume that this is this is the single-user MIMO. We just assume for simple calculation, but mm. uh, uh, simple calculation means to 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 select the best transmit antenna. Mm. So, but for the real transmission. We are using the beamforming technology mm. for the multi user yeah. So, for example, if, uh, even without assuming, for example, maybe random selection, mm. you, you can just let any two random number without assuming, mm. without single user, without the multi, multi user MIMO. Mm. We don't need to consider anything. We just need to select only two antenna. Mm. 
maybe that one or that one. Mm. Even after selection, you can transmit mm. to user with beamforming oh. technology. Oh, okay. so, so, so that means we just assume is to select, to select only the uh, antennas. So, so you after sledding. So you you also assume the two users are very c closely. Two users very closely. You you mean you mean, I mean ge geographically they are closely located, or I mean you mean. You mean like clo close to each other or? Yeah, what, yeah, what? yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, if this, um, even this, this user side, we will also select mm. the user selection. We will also uh, apply the user selection, not only on the antenna side. I see. That's also uh, on the okay. user side. We will also select. Uh, so maybe final selected user will be far away from each other. Uh. I yeah. see. I just explain only on the antenna selection, but uh, similar such procedure algorithm we apply to the user side. Okay. Yeah. And the one, the one more question is about: uh, uh, Do you also consider uh, or plan to uh, do some uh, uh, theoretical analysis on this? Uh, theoretical an analysis mean in this uh, uh, method we. We, we present two results. One is the numerical analysis. Numerical analysis means for our equation one and for equation two, there we can calculate uh, the we can calculate the number of uh, floating point operating uh, mm -hmm. for the CPU usage. Mm -hmm. So this calculation is uh, yeah shown here. Uh, so for example, this one. Mm. So that is uh, the complexity analysis for the singular ability composition method. And so uh, if we, we use a singular ability composition method, we need to apply this uh, complexity mm. okay. for the numerical analysis. Mm. So, but for our method, uh, we don't use the singular ability composition. We, we use only one time. Mm. So that's why we put here, that is only one time. One time, and but we also need to put this is also the floating point requirement for calculation of the like this is a like finding the chain again and mm. make make the assigning order, mm. and this is kind of the metric calculation mm. inside the equation one. Mm. So by using this uh, parameter, we can calculate the complexity, okay. and also. Uh, the proposed method, uh, that this is complexity in method 21. They also analyze by using this kind of uh, mm. uh, parameter. In their case, they are using the singular value decomposition so many times. That's why this singular value decomposition complexity is multi need to multiply by the number of uh, combination they are considered, and also like this. And also, this is the optimal method that <laughs> complexity analysis. So, so that is some, maybe, I don't know, maybe this is a numerical analysis is similar to, but, but we, 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 we cannot use the pure uh, theoretical analysis for the complexity. Uh, do, do you also extend this one to, uh, not, for, not for complexity, just for like, as a matrix, like a, uh, uh, like a, uh, you know, bandwidth or uh, uh, not only for bandwidth. Uh, sorry, not only for complexity, but also mm. bandwidth. So, uh, yeah, bandwidth mean in, in our result, this is bandwidth improvement. So, for example, this one. This is this is bandwidth improvement. This is bit by second per hash. Mm. So that means. This is our method. Uh, this black, black color is the method in mm -hmm. So here we can see that the, our method can achieve more, more, more uh, PBS when compared with uh, method in 21. Mm -hmm. And also this is for use, uh, this case is considered for number of transfer and then 12 and IF chain is four. Mm -hmm. This is uh, number of user varies from two to 20. 
uh, we consider another case, this is number of transmission and then uh, 12, and uh, IFT is three. Mm. So for, for both cases, uh, our method is better implement when compared with the method, uh, conventional method. So that is how okay. we can make the bandwidth improvement, yes. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I want to ask the uh, Professor Sabwa yes. to give some suggestions. Yes. Because in his case, he graduated from my group, and uh, he came also from Asia, yeah. from developing countries. And there are many foreign students who are now still working as a student. Yeah. But after 10 years, you'll be professor. Yeah. <laughs> so in that case, you can just tell, tell them that what yes. are the, your the suggestions or yeah, things that. Uh, uh, yeah, my suggestion is in, in, in my study as a uh, master student in Keio University, uh, the first difficulty is how to prove uh, my work. I, ha I have idea or concept, but I don't know how to prove that one. Uh, so to prove our idea or concept, we have, uh, we need to use, uh, as, uh, Professor Dagis also already mentioned about this case, uh, we have two song uh, with maybe only uh, two case, uh, among the three case. Three case is, uh, you, need to, you need to develop uh, real, real hardware to prove you are, uh, idea is good, better than other, other, uh, other than other technology. But you have to create by yourself because we are doing the research. So it is not easy to get, it, it is not easy to buy uh, our required device. For example, now we are considering the 5G technology. This 5G technology now trying to use the very high bandwidth, maybe for example, if you're considering about the 100 gigahertz frequency for your transmission. So in that case, you, you cannot easily buy the required device to set up your hardware inside the lab. So for that case, if you have the strong ability in the mathematics, so you can prove your idea by using the mathematical equation or something. Uh, but it is also very difficult uh, to prove your idea by using the mathematical equation. Sometimes it is very difficult. So more, 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 a little more easier word is uh, by using the simulation. Uh, you, can imp uh, you can prove your result uh, uh, by developing the system in the uh, simulation, by using the simulation to like NS2 uh, or MATLAB or C programming or something like that. So that means a man, uh, three method, the simulation analysis is uh, more easier than as, uh, easier than other two methods. So at least uh, you have, if you have a chance, uh, you should be uh, uh, very skillful in one programming language. Like if you are interested in C programming, then study C. But in, in, my, uh, in my experience, do, using the uh, low level language, to develop the simulation tool for your research work. It is very difficult. So nowadays, now there has a easier programming language like MATLAB. In my experience, MATLAB is the easiest one to study and to apply in your uh, simulation tools. So, so if you have not studied yet uh, the MATLAB programming, that just uh, maybe you can briefly introduce yourself with MATLAB. If this MATLAB uh, programming is okay for you, then you can uh, master this uh, programming very easily by studying the online course and something like that. And also you can discuss with me anytime at uh, Seven Floor if you, have, you want to discuss about the MATLAB and MIMO technology. Yeah, so that is my suggestion. Okay, okay. I just remember, I just said one thing. When he was a master student, he submitted a good paper, but the paper was accepted conditionally, and he revised. And I was, at that, I was a very, very tough professor. I didn't agree. I said, this is, you have to revise again, <laughs> maybe three or four times. And finally, he had some stomach ache, and he was sent to the hospital. <laughs> and he was taken by another colleagues. He was so nervous, and uh, then I told him how to revise the paper. Yeah. And after the paper was accepted, he was so happy. 
Yeah. And at that time, he was a he was he was supported by Asia uh, Asia yeah, ADB, ADB, ADB program US bank. Yeah. So he have to return to Myanmar because he cannot continue. Yeah. But he said to me at that time he want to continue to a PhD. Yeah. He saved some money. But I said mm. it's a, of course it's a good money. But I said okay, yeah. he can return. Yeah. Okay. Because that is a promise, you know, for yeah. the ABB. Yeah. And he returned and he came back again to study to get a PhD. At that time, I was uh, I don't have any problem. Okay, because he had a hard time. Because at that time, I was really tough boss, tough yeah. professor. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and then, but when he got a PhD, I didn't say almost anything. He submitted yeah. and the paper is and the condition accepted. But uh, I just saw his answer, answer or reply. Yeah. I thought it's good enough. So I don't say anything. Then so in some sense, I'm very happy now. He is a full professor, and this time he contributed to us as a guest professor, like a seminar to tax. So that is uh, maybe for me, I'm very happy. So for you, as a PhD student or master student, you think about 10 years later. But you have to work very, very hard. Okay? Yes, that is very important. Okay, as a yeah. tax thought, we, we are like an exponent, not, not the bus stop, maybe bus stop, we the opposite side. Okay? Opposite of the bus, bus stop, you know. <laughs> we are, you are fast at zero, okay? yeah. suddenly going up, yeah. and keep mm. higher level. Yeah. And for our age, <laughs> going down. <laughs> so the opposite side of the bus stop, you know. Okay? So any other questions? Okay? Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.